You know, I wish that this island on Sakon would get struck by an asteroid, and I could escape. No, I'm built different. During the age of excavation, many explorers of the world were separate in different kinds of new lands on the map. Sorry, that's what I tend to say whenever I get reincarnated. Wait, hold on, you killed me! Why? Oh, right. I kinda deserve that one. How am I alive, anyways? Huh. Brain damage? You didn't shoot me in my brain. You have a suspiciously large amount of knowledge about my anatomy. Whatever, I probably don't have any brain damage anyways. I feel perfectly fine. Say, does anyone else have the sudden urge to talk about vexillology? Hello and welcome to the Vexillology Volumes, a series of videos where I put the ill in vexillology. So for the first installment, let's talk about that burning question in your mind right now. What the heck is a vexillology? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oh, whatever, just start the damn video. Vexillology studies all things relating to flags. Most importantly, where they come from and what they symbolize. The word is a synthesis of the Greek logia, meaning the study of, and the Latin vexillum, the forefather of flags. Unlike modern day flags, where the hoist is hung on the side of a pole, the vexillum was suspended at the front of a staff with a spear on top, making it the perfect weapon for us vexillophiles. This is important because the word vexillum itself is based off of the word vellum, meaning little sail. It's likely that the vexilla were used to communicate signals between ships, just like the Greeks did, and the infantry on the ship took the flag to the battlefield, which is why they were later used to represent a legion or a temporary military unit of the Empire. This does mean that unlike our modern military flags, there are many different variations that were practically the same thing. They might imagine if they're infantry or cavalry, a legion or a cohort, the number of their legion or the place that their legion fights in, animals representing the zodiac sign of the legion, or a boar representing royalty, or even a pegasus symbolizing the speed of the cavalry. Sometimes they say screw it and throw the goddess of victory Victoria herself on the vexillum to show off how much better they are than you. This is a modern recreation that you can find on Wikipedia, but I've got no idea what it means. Could someone who studies Latin help me out here? Maybe then your studies could actually be useful for once. Because vexillology is such a niche interest, it was difficult for a vexillologist to meet up due to the long distances between them and the lack of communication options. So the American Whitney Smith coined the term vexillology and created the Flag Bulletin in 1961, a magazine containing articles on flag history, events, and other such things. With the release of this magazine and the increasing possibilities of communicating with each other, people could hold meetings to talk about flags, which eventually evolved into an organization, the FIAV which stands for Fédération Internationale des Associations Vexillologiques. The FIAV holds meetings where flag fanatics share some of their studies on flags, and studies on the symbolism of a flag are very popular among them. Let's practice that ourselves with the flag of the organization. The flag has a blue background representing the sea, since those early vexilla were used at sea to communicate signals. Two yellow halyards, ropes on a sailing ship, are interlaced, symbolizing the friendship between the vexillologists. The loops create two hemispheres, and there are four ends of the rope, Together we get six, representing the regions of the world. Because fuck Antarctica. Also, the four ends seem to be able to go on forevermore, because the study of flag is endless. You will not escape. My flag is a little simpler. It's got a leaf in the middle with very autumn-like colors, my favorite season, and the lines on the side symbolize the swaying of the leaf in the wind, just like the swaying of my view count. So what's your flag based on, eh? Yes, that's why I asked. Hey, maybe that's what EBM stands for. EL, black, and orange. Remember those meetings that the FIAV holds? It's called the International Congress of Vexillology. They're held every two years, and all the documents that are submitted at the meetings are posted online for the world to see, making it an absolute goldmine for future vexillology volumes. ICVs also have their own flags. Some are pretty unique. Some look better than their actual counterpart, and some really want you to know that it was the 14th installment. You can look through some of those articles yourself if you'd like. I'll leave a link in the description. So those are the basics of vexillology. If you're looking for a community of flag lovers besides those organizations, then all you have to do is visit your worst nightmare. 
So let's put a bow on this video. Before and after the ICVs, a band plays a song called Marcia Vexilum as a big ceremony. Let's listen to it together. I will make so many volumes of this stupid thing, I'm so sorry. EBM, you and me, we will make the world aware of our fury. For the subs and the dubs, hoping that the darn system will notice me. Night and day. Working late But to do that I will need a lot of mugs of coffee Oh! Hey hey, welcome once again to the outro where about 10% of people click off of the video, and honestly, can't blame them. I would do the exact same thing. Anyways, if you liked that video, then subscribe because I'll be making a lot more content like this. Also, I post daily in the community tab on my channel, usually drawings to these next video, but eventually some other stuff like polls that you can participate in. Alright, see ya!